you say, wow. Mike. Uh, you had mentioned this prayer that was just so powerful. The traditional Jewish wedding vows of hmm. saying, I pledge myself to you in faithfulness and love, and you will see God. And so to imagine what hmm. it looks like to make that kind of pledge to a city to say, hmm. I love you in faithfulness, and you will see God. To say that to our city and hmm. say, um, I will be an image bearer to you, Washington, to you, to my city. I will be the image bearer and you will see God. And there's something even about like sonship when you were talking about that. It just reminded me of that, that cool combination of sonship and the marriage and the, the way that dreams are involved in that. And like um, that when we, our identity is rooted there's something about dreams being birthed out of that, and there's just something about um, marriage that I think is so such a great picture of that, of new life coming from marriage, yeah. of um, you know some of the most beautiful marriages that you see are the ones that really love one another into their dreams, and to say like I own your dream, I own. Um, and I'm going to help you get to that point. And what would it look like for the body of Christ to have that kind of posture towards a city mm-hmm. to say, I, um, I dream for you, wow. for my city, and I see like, the fruit coming from you. You know, that, that's a remarkable idea. And I think that's actually bound up in what the Lord is asking the exiles to do through Jeremiah. Um, you know, sometimes I think that uh, we actually can relate really quite a bit to the exiles in the sense that, you know, as believers, we're looking for a different city. We're looking for that city that the yeah. Lord will bring out of the sky, that He will marry forever. Uh, and in a similar way, the Israelites, they were looking to return to their Jerusalem. And so we have that in common. We're living in a place where it's not our ultimate destiny, and we know that. And there's so there's part of us that would say, well, why invest here? And I think you see that a lot, you either, if not explicitly, then implicitly in the mm-hmm. posture of a lot of believers, you know, why invest here if we're not going to be here in a long-term kind of way? But the message of Jeremiah in, in chapter 29 says, no, invest yeah. mm-hmm. and plant and marry. And all of that includes dreaming. You can't yeah. go through the motions mm-hmm. of marrying sons and daughters and building businesses and you know, planting vineyards, those are all like long-term investments uh, that shape the way you think about your future and your Mm. children's future and inheritances and Mm. uh, all of the different things that that, that constitute a human life and a human Mm. heart, they're very knit to places. And so for the Lord to say in Jeremiah 29, seek the welfare Mm. of the city that you're living in and there you'll find your welfare. It's almost like saying, dream with your city and there you'll find your dreams fulfilled. And I, I just feel like we need to do that more. You know, sometimes we live like exiles and we feel like we're exiled from the city we live. So we kind of shut ourselves into our churches and like mm-hmm. just have our services and mm-hmm. say, well, whatever happens out there happens out there. But that is the exact opposite of what we see in Jeremiah 29. We need to get out into the streets and dream yeah. among the people where we find ourselves, mm-hmm. you know, for the glory of God. You know? yeah, totally. so.